Welcome to our lecture online. By 1964, there had been eight missions to Mars, with only one successful mission, one mission that flew past Mars and took a bunch of pictures, and that was Mariner 4. So both the Soviet Union and the United States decided to let some time go by, go back to the drawing board, try to figure out what had gone wrong in those previous missions, and they skipped one of the launch windows. So from 1966-1967 launch window, that was simply skipped, so there was more time to prepare for the following missions. Now the Soviet Union was a little bit more adventurous than the United States because they had planned two missions that would actually go and into orbit around Mars, while the United States, with Mariner 6 and 7, decided to do two additional flybys. There was also a huge difference in the payload size of the two missions. The Soviet Union missions, uh, which were numbered 2M, number 521, and 2M, number 522, had a payload of 4,850 kilograms. That's over 10,000 pounds. So essentially, that was the combined mass of perhaps four regular-sized cars where the Mariner 6 and 7 missions only had a payload of 412 kilograms. So there's a huge difference. And the difference, ex it um, had three, there were three different important aspects of the difference in the mass. First of all, in order to put a lot more mass into space, you need much more pow powerful rockets. So the rockets that the Soviet Union was using, the boosters to get things into space, were much more powerful, required a whole lot more fuel and energy to get them up into space. Secondly, if you're going to go into orbit around Mars, well, then you need to carry additional fuel to slow yourself down to make that orbital insertion. Otherwise, you'll just go right past the planet. And that's, of course, the, the easier part of doing a flyby rather than going around the planet. And so you need additional fuel. And then the Soviet Union never really had big constraints on the, on the weight of their components. They were probably cheaper to make but they were able to boost that extra, ma uh, that extra mass or weight into space. And so you can see there's a huge differential between the two. But what was the result of the next uh, moment, the next time that we had a, a window to get to Mars, which was in the beginning of 1969? And notice we had two Mariner missions, Mariner 6 and 7, and two of the Soviet Union missions, the 2M521 and 2M522. Notice both of the Mariner missions were actually successful. They actually both had a flyby at about the same distance. And notice that distance flyby was about half the distance that Mariner 4 had when it flew past Mars. So we were able to take higher resolution pictures. Hopefully by then also the cameras were a little bit better as well. And notice that the two Soviet missions failed and they failed in the same way. They failed to achieve Earth orbit. I guess I should have parentheses on the back side here as well. Um, so they were able to get off the ground, but they couldn't achieve Earth orbit, which is the first stage that you need in order to get off Earth's orbit. But in other words, then at that point, once you get into orbit, you wait for the right moment in time as you're going around the Earth. And at the right moment in time, you turn on the afterburners and you give it the extra speed to escape the gravitational force of the Earth and put itself on the correct course to Mars. So the two spacecraft from the Soviet Union were not able to achieve that low Earth orbit in order to set themselves up to boost into space and go to Mars. Um, there was an, an interesting mishap with Mariner, Mariner 6. They do pre-launch testing. Uh, they fill the fuselage with helium to pressurize it and by accident two valves were opened and the helium began to escape and the pressure began to reduce and the fuselage actually began to crumple up. Uh, luckily the two technicians saw what happened, realized what was going on, were able to circumvent the closure of the, uh, the valves, they were able to close the valves, uh, they were then able to pump back in additional gases to increase the pressure, but the fuselage had been damaged beyond repair. Then the interesting part was they then took the Mariner 6 and put it on top of the Mariner 7 fuselage and then they brought in an additional booster and additional fuselage in order to get Mariner 7 into space as well. It turned out that they ended up both being successful missions. So you can see that we were now capable of sending spacecraft to Mars, fly by Mars, so the next step would be to 
to do what the Soviet Union was trying to do is put missions into space that would actually go into orbit around Mars. Of course, once you're able to go into orbit around Mars, you can then detach a lander and then try to land on the planet as well. So the first thing we need to do is learn how to go into orbit around Mars. No one had been successful yet at this point. Now this is 1969, the year that people were sent to the moon and actually walked on the moon. So notice that uh, by the time these two Mariners missions flew past the planet, it was just about the same time as the Apollo mission uh, going to the moon. So at this point, the ability to go into orbit around another planet was still something that was very difficult to do and we're trying to figure out how to get that done. It would of course require additional payload, additional fuel, additional difficulties to do that, but at least so far we, it began to, uh, to look like we're able to pull off successful missions to Mars in a fly-by mode. All right, so next we see if they can actually accomplish going around the planet itself. So for that Stay tuned and see what else we have in store. Although before we do that, we probably want to talk a little bit more about the specific payload that the Mariner 6 and 7 had on board, what they were able to, to figure out about the planet Mars. Remember at the time, they were slowly beginning to understand the secrets of the planet. They weren't quite sure there was life on the planet, if it was livable, if water once existed on the planet and so forth. So we began to take a look at those pictures, which at the time were not as good, to try and figure out what was going on on the planet. So let's go take a look and see what some of the details were, the missions of Mariner 6 and 7, before we go on to what was the next step in this exploration of Mars. <laughs> 